Jones, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones, minutes. You say happy holidays and then... No, this is how we're starting now. I'm starting like this. Whoa! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, no, he's here. Welcome, everybody. Oh, no, Santa got in. <laughs> oh, I was coming down this chimney, and, oh, well, you see, I got stuck. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I died. It's like gremlins. You got soot in my hot chocolate. Hmm. You bastard. Well, for, for those of you who have not heard gremlins, this is the episode where we talk about the 1964 classic Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer to try to get everybody in the mood for the holidays, which for me means a good old-fashioned bah humbug. Oh, what do you mean? Pete, no, wait a minute. What? Wait, what? wait that's our cue. That's our cue. Say. <laughs> Did you well, say you know, bah humbug? Long face. You know, Eric, Eric Reynolds was on the, uh, in the listeners' crusade the other day saying, is, there, is Pete ever not positive about something? Yeah. Well, I'm, not a, I'm not a holiday guy. What? Really? Really, yeah. Oh wow. my this God. is a guy who I'm likes not. ticks? Jeez. And still, he's not a holiday guy? <laughs> Unless they're holiday. More cocoa for me. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Holiday ticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how come you're not a holiday <laughs> yeah, guy? Yeah, what's the matter with you? I don't know. I had a lot of bad uh, bad holidays, I think. Uh, Everybody has a lot of bad holidays. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean you blame the holidays. <laughs> well, you do if you had the kind I do. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you kind of try to avoid uh, reminiscing about some of those. Do you actually literally do that? Oh, do you just not do them? Do you not? Uh... No, no. Uh, my wife loves the holidays, so oh. I, I grudge what a maniac. go along. Yeah. This grit your teeth. <laughs> but she always we'll say this is going to be swell. <laughs> yeah. well, we got just the thing to lift your spirits, Peter. Story yeah, of inclusion got, got a... and hope and love and yeah. And we got a Charlie in the box. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get grape jelly in your face. It's going to yeah. be great. Yep. And for those of you who have not seen Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or have not seen it in a long time, uh, it, it was a TV special that came out in 1964. And it begins with live footage of a, a terrible snowstorm and people pushing a stuck car. And then we get several uh, newspaper headlines that flash across the screen. And they're, they're very telling. The first one is from the New York Herald Tribune. And it says, cold wave in 12th day. But above the, uh, above the header, it says, Communal- communication satellite, Russia once in. Ooh. <laughs> wow. And, wow. <laughs> I like this because A... It's kind of a, hey, you guys may have gotten up there first with Sputnik, but now you want what we have. Mm-hmm. And B, the first satellite communications tests were done using a uh, high-altitude balloon, and the communications that they used to do that were received at Echo Deep Space Station in Goldstone, California, oh. which, if you are a fan of Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which we are. that is where they uh, get the coordinates. No way. That's where the, the globe scene takes place. Oh, very you cool. Have, you oh, have wow. really taken nerdism like like to a new height here. A new holiday <laughs> height. <laughs> wow. Well, that I've got all kinds one. of nerdisms for all this right, That was just the first yeah. paper. You know, it's great. It's, and uh, the, the whole Rudolph, uh, you know, this whole Rudolph thing takes place in the, in the North Pole, which, of course, uh, I mean, that, that's, that's sort of where North America meets Russia. Yeah. Isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Like, weren't we always afraid that, like, uh, you know, ballistic missiles were going to fly right over Santa's house? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. It's also possible that a man named Klaus mm. uh, snuck away after the Second World War and ended up in the North Pole in a U-boat. I don't know. We'll have to see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. so our, uh, our, second, well, uh, our second headline, we get the Chicago Sun-Times. We're frozen, and the O is a giant it O. It is. Like a donut. Like a giant, engorged, frozen O. Yeah. <laughs> is that the Russians too? Delicious. Oh, what I thought was... Uh, int- no. What's was that? that the Russians too? Yeah. No? No. Okay. <laughs> do, they, uh, do they have an O in... Is it Cyrillic? Cyrillic alphabet? That it's probably got o. something hanging off it or something. <laughs> <laughs> a little curly yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, what, what's, what's interesting is... Uh, 
Yeah, I was noticing about the newspapers. Back in 1964, the newspapers cost five cents. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's more than they're worth today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> everybody's just like Google News. Yeah. 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 Well, another, CNN.com. Another interesting thing about these newspapers is that they are all dated 1964. And the special came out in 1964. And we'll find out very soon that uh, our narrator says, remember a couple of years ago, that terrible snowstorm? Yes. So I'm wondering if this, is, if this is a science fiction story, if this takes place in the future. Well, oh. well, actually. But is he referring to that same storm? I was actually never clear on that. Like, are we just being presented with uh, evidence of a crazy storm across the country? And then he's like, oh, yeah, storms. Remember that other storm? Yeah, oh, boy. Oh, well, possible. he's actually enjoying the uh, wonderful North Pole weather. He's like, not like that crazy storm. But um, now that yeah. you mention it, uh, another newspaper that spins up the San Francisco, San Francisco Chronicle has foul weather uh-huh. may postpone Christmas. Uh, but to the left of that is an article that says an open door in space. So perhaps, yeah. so perhaps, yeah, it's what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Scientists <laughs> theorize talking, singing snowmen may be possible through yeah. space. Through sp- yeah, yes. that's right. <laughs> At Echo Gold Base or whatever you said. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, to- this is a question for Tommy. How would you describe the snowman's voice? <laughs> Very Burl Ivesy. <laughs> yeah, I, I I actually said it, it's it's like butter mixed with butterscotch. Oh, oh very nice. That's a nice way to describe yeah. it. It's yeah. butter mixed it's with butterscotch, and then it's also got like kind of like a oh, oh it's five thirty, isn't it? Oh, Grandpa needs his cocktail. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. That too. <laughs> it's butterscotch and scotch, I think. I would I would just <laughs> pull up I an would ice Describe cube. it as a, a voice that would sell out Pete Seeger later to the Un American Committee of the House. 1952. Yeah, that's right. That's Actually, that's... it was before, I guess. 12 years before. That kind of voice. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He named names. He named he names. Named names. They, he he oh, sure did. Girl. He was suspected of being a communist, and he turned. <laughs> and Pete Seeger did not wow. really what? appreciate it. Wrote all about it, and then he... Oh, I hate the holidays. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you're kidding oh, no. me, bro. I, the snowman, the, the, the snowman that's, that's cock-shirting here? Well, his first name is Sam, like Uncle Sam. You think he was oh, sucking yeah. up? Oh, yeah. He's oh. also the voice of Sam <laughs> the Eagle He seems all jolly and like he's on our side. And then, oh. <laughs> yeah, so the, the movie begins, <laughs> the, the special begins with a talking snowman, Sam, who shows up. Wearing a waistcoat that Jerry would love to have, and no mm-hmm. pants, and no, and no pants. pants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and he says, "Oh, excuse me, what's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a talking <clears throat> snowman before?" And I wonder if in 1964, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. But were kids like goggle-eyed looking at the screen, like with their mouths agape at the prospect of a talking snowman? Kids have always been very stupid, so I would imagine that <laughs> yeah, they were just blown away. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> you know, I I wondered can. Can any of you guys explain to me how the snowman ambulates? <laughs> it's sort of job of the huddish, isn't it? It is sort of job. It kind of like Irish. waddles yeah. back and mm-hmm. forth and kind of it just happens. <laughs> yeah, that's he's right. a beautiful human being. That's right. And I want to know. I want to know who he thinks he's talking to. Is he right. is he talking to a camera crew? No. I think there's a cut scene at the end, like after the end credits, where it's just like a raccoon sitting there with a camera. <laughs> Got it. Wow. Well, if 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 he's made of snow. And then the ground is made of snow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like how? I, I mean, is he confined to the snow-covered parts of the world? And I look. I know he's a snowman. Duh. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, good. can he? Like, can he traverse permafrost? Um, or, or like the maybe. tundra? Could you like grab a handful of him and make a new snowman? And then what is that? Is it like his offspring or is it like a clone or? <laughs> he's, he's really going to need a drink after that. You're, yeah, really. You're start making little snow people. Well, the thing, you know, Elf, the movie Elf with uh, Will Ferrell, mm-hmm. which is brilliant. Mm-hmm. Even if you hate Christmas like Pete does, that monster. <laughs> uh, they do a lot of Rudolphish stuff. Like it's almost like a live action version uh-huh. of this, except uh-huh. even better. And they they have they have uh, uh, what's his name uh, oh god Bob Newhart. I'm gonna blank Leon Redbone right 
They have like a they have a snowman that's like this character, but he's uh, I think it's I think yeah. it's oh, yeah. Leon yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. he uh and he's he makes like some reference to like, Oh yeah, I remember when I was just a cumulo nimbus cloud. That's right. <laughs> and and so like yeah, like I wonder if like he's just he's just ice particles uh, arranged in a certain way, like mm-hmm. uh you know, how 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 are you? How are your particles arranged, Jerry? That <laughs> form the snowman that is you. <laughs> Change just well, one I mean, particle. What, what is it still Jerry Porter? <laughs> well, you know, we, oh. we we surmised in Temple of Doom that maybe Willie Scott went east uh, for religious reasons, and I kind of like the. Uh, this is a nice way to live. Like if wherever he goes, he takes on the moment of where he is. So yeah. He, then he why is, would he, he need an umbrella? Yeah. I wondered. That, that's like basically a parasol. And and there's a right. certain irony about having that in the North Pole, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. if, it is, if it is a parasol. Now, well, we can also say, why does he need glasses? Why does he need a hat? Why does he need a well, waistcoat? Well, he clearly doesn't need pants. <laughs> right. He doesn't have glasses. figured that out. Maybe he's, yeah. we're, he's like mid-evolution. He's going to figure out later on, ah, this is all, what am I? I'm not a human being. I don't need clothes and accoutrement. But he does I'm use good. the parasol twice to try to block out the True. stuff that he doesn't want to see. True. Yeah, yeah. That's true. And he has the yeah. regulation number point. of uh, fingers for an animated character, oh. which is four. <laughs> right. So he's all set The there. animation in this, by the way, is, is pretty amazing. It was done in Japan using puppets with wire armatures. Uh-huh. And this was, this was cool stuff. It is oh, cool yeah. stuff. Wow. I was agog. I find the comedic timing suffers sometimes in, yeah. this, in this animation, but um, we, we forgive it. And the Foley work sometimes is a little off, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nerds. Uh, I'll, I'll say, you know, what I notice is a lot of the morals are off. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The moral yeah. lessons yeah. are off here. Yeah. But you know, the moral uh, you know they were, yeah. we'll, we'll look into it, but I, I, think in, uh, I think those were 1964 morals. So you got a discount yeah. a little bit. Some of these might have been 1943 morals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We'll see where we go. Yeah. I, I'm, I'd venture to say, I'd posit that, you know, this whole little thing isn't really about a cold snap, is it? No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no, it's about, it's about a culture of cold. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. It's a cold yeah. snap in the human heart. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> it's frosty where these yeah. people are. And, frosty. And yes. who's the frostiest, evilest man of them all? It's Mr. Klaus, Santa yeah, Claus. It is Santa Claus. Yeah. 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 Turn of the Bastard. century robber baron's mansion. That's true. <laughs> and he says, he says, Sam says, of course, the number one citizens up here are the Klauses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They live right over there, uh, first castle on the left. Mm-hmm. The elite. Yep. They're the only castle and, on like, the left they made, how, because they also bought all the land around it. Yes. Right. And I bet they don't let They actually own Sam because he's snow. Yeah. Oh, they own everything. Yeah. Yeah, they own, uh, yeah, they absolutely. He's snow on their land, so he's he's their property. Even though yeah. Sam actually uh, mentions those Christmas seals, I remember when he's going to buy. <laughs> he the, literally <laughs> mentions the Christmas seals. Yeah, I the love. Christmas seals. So, which that I might never, have been a hilarious joke in 1964. It would have. Yeah, I think I think. Do they? What? I'll let somebody else ask what's a Christmas seal because I know it's a thing, but like. Oh well, I'm so glad like you a, asked that because they were started in 1871. Whoa! Oh my God. Uh, what? By Dr. Edward Trudeau, who actually caught TB <laughs> and retired to a small upstate New York cabin to die. But, there's your holiday <laughs> right there. In other but news. then he recovered and uh, he started the first uh, uh, TB hospital, which he uh, called a sanatorium. And uh, oh, lo- the sanatorium? Uh, say, yes, said? that's exactly what I said. No, okay. but that would have been funny. And then in 1907, <laughs> there were a lot of them around the country. And one of them needed $300 to stay open. So uh, one of the doctors who was there uh, treating all the tubercular patients had an enterprising uh, cousin. And he said, uh, do you think you can fundraise 300 bucks? And she had heard about uh, TB fund, uh, fundraising for TB hospitals in Denmark. Not making this up. And uh, the guy in Denmark was uh, selling little stamps. And she's like, I, I bet we could do that here. So she borrowed the idea. She borrowed 40 bucks and she printed up 50,000 little stamps, which she sold for a penny a piece. And that's a lot. And she made not $300 to save the sanatorium and Christmas, but $3,000. <laughs> hey, and that's hey. Christmas seals. And I never, never, never caught that when I was a kid. In fact, I never <laughs> caught that till like 15 minutes yeah. ago. But there you go. <laughs> he thought he was being totally literal. 
Yeah. Look, I see Christmas mm-hmm. seals. <laughs> Snowman <laughs> says what he sees. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Why, why does Santa have a castle? Does he get attacked uh, periodically? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, a moat filled with it's peppermint jelly. It's really more of a palace, and, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. More of a villa than a... Than a well, I, see, I think it's like those robber baron mansions up by where you guys grew up in Cleveland. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a lot like Cleveland, actually. This whole little thing is a lot like Cleveland. The depressing nature, the fact that yeah. Yeah. Donner Snow. beats you. Nobody accepts you for who you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, Donner does not beat his kid. Oh, I Take didn't say back. he didn't beat. He just beats him up. He beats him up. I don't know. I, Don, I just I, mean I don't I don't want spiritually, to be spiritually, spiritually, spiritually. Yeah, yeah. spiritually. Yeah. I'm not, None I'm of the snowmen I'm not wear saying pants. Donner's a child abuser. No. No. <laughs> he tries a little harder than some other people in this thing. Slightly. A little. A little. Huh. He, you know who he is? Funky. He's the uh he's he's, uh, he's Ronnie from Close Encounters. What? She he wants yeah. to he wants to spray the uh the, the other side of his face with the uh, orange spray oh. tan. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good way to describe him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay then. He doesn't accept his family and he uh, yeah. yeah. So she actually loves Rudolph. Ronnie just couldn't care less right. about uh, Roy. <laughs> I think she loves Roy. I think she just In loves society way. more. Yeah. Kind of like Mrs. <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Klaus. She doesn't here. want to be judged for her love. Yeah. Did it, how, do you, how do you think Santa made his money? Uh, Pete, you really hate the holidays, uh, don't you? I mean, you are not kidding around. I, you know what? I think, I don't think he made money. I think he just, I, he's got all this, I'm assuming, free elf labor. And they that's, just that's built a him a castle. Yeah. And they operate his... Uh, his, his, I mean, you know, we'll give, he is Santa Claus. We'll say, okay, he's giving away all these free toys to kids all over the world and stuff. Uh, but he's a bit of a prick. A bit. He's like, he's like yeah. a bit a of bit. a, you know, yeah. he's, he's, he's a grump. Yeah. And he's, he's kind of a racist and he's kind of intolerant. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, is, is this like, you know, like Rockefeller or, or somebody building a library, Carnegie building a library? Like to assuage his guilt for, you know, breaking the backs of the poor. Is this yeah, maybe. tossing out trinkets yeah. to the kids to try to feel a little bit better? Right, wow. forcing them to sing songs about how happy they are and how much they love uh-huh. Christmas. <laughs> While he's like, "Oh, would you shut up?" And notice, oh he's, and notice he still he sets himself up as the ultimate judge. Like he's the one that decides what's good and bad. Right, That's right. True. Yeah, everybody just wants to The tender to section you. was weak. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think this whole thing is a lot like feudalism. Well, you know, it is. Yeah, Santa yeah. is the king, and the mm-hmm. elves quote rent a bunk bed in the castle <laughs> as long as uh-huh. they, you know, can till the soil in the toy shop. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's actually. I think you're Lucky. right because even Sam the Snowman uh, says, uh, "Hmm, seems elves have a certain knack for toy making." I mean, what does he actually mean by that? <laughs> I think he means they're slaves. Yeah, I think yeah. he means yeah. they're slaves. That's a nice- yeah. yeah, they're stupid yeah. enough to work for free. Yeah, yeah, That's and and they they're just bootlickers. <laughs> is what they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, they don't have a choice. No, yes, they don't. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, where I mean, that's we get into this later, but I mean, you know, where are you gonna go if you're an elf? You're born. In, I mean, I mean, here's right. the thing. This is it's very much like a small town or even a caste system. It's like there's a caste mm-hmm. system. You're born, and that's what you are. Mm-hmm. The yeah. end. Well, it's also very much like a prison camp because it's like Belloc <laughs> saying it's the desert's three weeks in every direction. Yeah. Like there's literally nowhere yeah. you can go. That's right. You yeah. can't escape. That's right. Yeah. And I know. I mean, let's they... be clear. You can cut a little iceberg thing off, but then what? It's like yeah, yeah they they still never escape. No. No, they don't. Yeah. Yeah, they re- they come back of their own free will. <laughs> Weirdos. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hey, Pete, I got a question for you. You're mm-hmm. weird behind closed doors. Do you call <laughs> your wife mama? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> My wife would beat me up if I called her mama. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know what's awesome? Yeah. I was you're not gonna believe me, but I was literally just watching this. Like I put this on like like as it was, as my family was trimming the tree, we put on Rudolph in the background, and Sam was watching. And my ten year old son, he's like, "Wait, why do they call each other Mama and Papa?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's like an old timey whatever." He's like, "But they don't have kids." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God, you're right. What the hell's going on?" Man, that that really wouldn't play into. Do they not have names? Wow. Good point. Papa, Mama, Papa, eat. I made you this nice clay. Yeah, pretty yeah. Ugly. A nice clay apple. Just eat. Pretty ugly clay. But I mean, there she is trying to keep up appearances. Like she's 
she's concerned about what people are going to think of him. Well, and the, yeah. that's true. And the irony is keeping up appearances means being fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, but it's also, a, like, you're not supposed to be, he's not supposed to be seen. Like, if he does his job right, no one's going to see him anyway. That's true. That's <laughs> true. That's also in keeping with our, our feudalism motif, mm-hmm. though, because in the Middle Ages, mm-hmm. you were considered very well off. You know, you were successful if you were very rotund. Yeah. Because it showed you could oh, afford right. to eat all you wanted to. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, all the clay. So she's doing her part. Belt. Yep. You know, she's, she's, yeah. she's, she's yeah. around. Yeah. She's mm-hmm. the society mm-hmm. lady. Yep. Mm-hmm. Who's she showing off for? Good question. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah or maybe there are other castles, like, you know, in different parts of the North Pole with, with various different uh, yeah. escape That's convicts a different special. whoever these people are. Well, there are. are. There are different castles. That's the strange thing here, is there's little tiny cottages, and then there's mm-hmm. castles. And that's mm-hmm. kind of your choice. Like, everybody either lives <laughs> in the castle, or there might be, like, one or two rogue cottages, or basically a, a cave that looks like you. Yes. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, That's the abominable snow monster lives in a cave yeah. and his house, it, it, it looks like him. Yeah. It's very artistic. Yeah. Which I kind of love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like you, 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 be, you look like where you live, which, it, which yeah. if, if that's the case, I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh. <well. laughs> yeah. Which one's Jerry's house? Uh, uh, <laughs> let's not. <laughs> But it's almost <laughs> it's it's almost like a Stalinist epithet. Like he says, they're the first citizens. Like they're the number yes. one citizens. Yeah, yes, yeah. Does. I mean, it's a good thing we they're have. The master race. Uh, you, we all, this. It's a good thing we have Sam to explain these things to us. You know, like for instance, if we were going to yeah. doubt mm-hmm. why Mrs. Klaus was uh, worried about uh, Papa eating, uh, Sam's there. Uh, Sam's there to actually say, now don't worry, Mrs. Klaus isn't gonna let him be skinny. Like, why would the TV audience really right. care about that? What's <laughs> yeah, I, I was, was worried. Su- you were worried. Yeah. I was supposed to worry about that. Thank you, Snowman. Yeah, talk about conformity. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Make all of you viewers do exactly what well, we say. So yeah, Speaking of conformity, just jumping right in here, is yeah. Rudolph bioluminescent? <laughs> His nose is. I mean, but is 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 that I the guess. whole thing here? Like bioluminescence? Does 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 he have an organ that captures sunlight and allows him to radiate it back, or is it one of those? I no. think like uh, what is it like bacteriogenic luminescence? Where no, I'm going to go with no symbiotic relationship between Was you he and the bacteria. <laughs> and he's gene spliced. No, I don't I'm think with, so. I'm with the professor on yeah, this. Yeah. I think he's a bioengineered spy. Because you notice when his, his nose glows, <laughs> you get these uh, these radio frequencies. So I think he's passing oh, messages. Yeah. That's that's why we got that's that, that, that's why we got that communication satellite stuff at the beginning with the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. You're right. Every time his nose glows, you get a you get a whistle. Yeah. 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 It's very uh, it's very E T. It's E T's yeah. heart. Yeah. I don't know which would be worse. Things, I mean, I don't too. think the nose. B- you know, glowing would bother me as much as the whistle all the time. And the strange thing yeah. is, yeah. I can't. It, it it looks like he can't control it. No, he can't control it. Like like it. he has a. I mean, his right. nose is is incontinent. Like he's incontinent <laughs> yeah. with the <laughs> yeah. nose yeah. glowing. Yeah. Like sometimes it happens based on like like he gets excited and it happens, but like all, most of the time it just happens totally randomly. And, but but right. see, the it's irony kinda... with that is, and they don't even talk about this, spoilers, but the irony is that at the very end of this little picture, he can't control it. He, he turns his yeah. nose on yeah. as a yeah. spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of, of course, he had, yeah. he had gone yeah. through puberty and all, so, you know, he was, <laughs> That's he, was true. he had probably <laughs> That's developed true. a few skills there. Um, he had big boy antlers. He did have big boy antlers. Yeah, so cute. I think it's kind of sad that they made him a shill for General Electric. You know, like like you know, yeah. talk about uh, yeah. big business coming in and messing with your your family and your kid and your whole life, and now you have to be the spokesperson. You know, bioluminescence would frankly yeah. be uh, preferable. You know, <laughs> being a freak gene mutant. Well, it's interesting too because this whole thing. Is you know it's an ad for General Electric, but it was born out of an ad for Montgomery Wards. Um, like about five minutes into this, uh, Sam the Snowman tells us to pull up an ice block, and he's going to tell us the story. 
and we cut to a Christmas tree with some credits. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And we get story by Robert May. And Robert May actually created Rudolph for Montgomery Ward's department store in 1939 as part of an advertising campaign. I did not know it was for Montgomery Ward. How about that? Yep. I knew it was old. And then old, old, old. Adapted from the song by Johnny Marks. And the song was was very well known at this point. Like it came out in, I think, the 40s. 47. Um, Was it 47? 47. And he was an interesting guy. I don't know how much you found out about him, uh, Christy, but he was Jewish, but he specialized in writing Christmas songs. Did not know that. <laughs> and he wrote all kinds. He wrote a lot of famous ones. He wrote all the ones for this movie. He wrote Rocket Around the Christmas Tree. Really? I Heard the Bells on huh. Christmas Day. Wow. All right. He, yeah, that was kind of his, his gig. That's a pretty good gig. Yeah. Yep. Um, Sell out. <laughs> <laughs> you know... We discover being Santa's reindeer isn't about merit, is it? It's it's actually nepotism. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't well, it it's like, yeah, to a degree. It's like you hire family members. You know, if you're Donner's kid, you know, yeah. th- then you're going to yeah. grow up. Yeah, but they have be- those tryouts and stuff. They still, like, I mean, you know, Donner, being Donner's <laughs> kid probably gets you, like, in line. You know, like, <laughs> you get a place at the tryouts. But then, like, the, you know, the guys have to actually right. perform, it seems like. You have to have proper birth to be able to get into the tryouts. Like, you <laughs> yeah. have to have it's the proper true. genetics. Yeah. It is elitist. Make yeah. no mistake. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's but true. then only a few of those people make it. And that actually, yeah, and that yeah. really worried me because I don't know what happened to all those other deer. You know, do they yeah. have to? Yeah, that's a good question. To, if that's the, if that's the gig for deer, do they have to go to you what know, you think, public uh, universities? I don't know. Do they have to? <laughs> what do you think, Mrs. Klaus is trying to feed her husband? Oh, oh Clary Stake. Oh, yeah, there's no female <laughs> flying reindeer. So what are all well, the no, females? Well, no, it's 1964. <laughs> They were busy curling their antlers, which they don't have, by the way. I know Clarice has them. <laughs> curling their antlers. <laughs> but, you know, they don't actually have them. So what, what uh, these folks know about uh, deer anatomy, not so good. Yeah. <laughs> but what does Rudolph know about deer anatomy? Because we see him, like, born, and he's in a cave. And then, you know, I don't know how long it takes a deer to mature to, you know, getting able to try out for the flying a year. team. A year, okay. So he's like a year old, and like, and they've been hiding him in his nose. Mm-hmm. So it seems like does he know like what a doe is? Does he know like has he ever seen another reindeer or anything? And like all of a sudden, like Clarice is talking to him, and not till he meets Fireball. Exactly, yeah, yeah. that instigator. Yeah. What, what? But Santa, before that happens, Santa like shows up at his house, yeah, and yeah. sings a song, and sings a song. <laughs> but then Santa's like, whoa. He can't be on my team. He's different. He's he's different. He's got this nose. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. like, you better hope that clears up. I, I think. <laughs> right. Yeah. Santa's into eugenics. Like it's, it's yeah. creepy. There's yeah. some really Seriously. creepy stuff. No, going it is. On here. It is really, it's really good. Rough. And, you Did know, you I notice what was the only thing on the, in, in the only piece of furniture in the uh, Donner household? No. It was the jingle bells you throw over a deer. So that was the only thing. Now maybe it's Donner's clothes because Donner also not wearing pants, right? Right. I mean, Comet wears a little hat later, but uh-huh. uh, but it is actually the <laughs> the whistle. circle of sleigh bells is what it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is basically That's a amazing. harness, which is basically like chains. Well, no, yeah, also, we don't like need anything pre- else. We just ha- need that. And and I think it goes without. You're born as into chattel into a chattel system. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is here. Which I, you know, I, I don't understand why is Santa all down with this shiny nose from the giddy up, because he yeah. he sets the negative tone on the whole island, and yeah. it's it's like many things in life. You know, if if we started out on the right paw here, you know, we wouldn't mm-hmm. have all this <laughs> backwards <laughs> righting our wrongs in a year and a half, and we all have. It's yeah. just and 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 you know that Donner's really just. You know, he's a little Santa Lickspittle. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. just kind of a yeah. sycophant to, to whatever, you know, Santa says. The the Klaus is up on the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guess who's coming even, to dinner, even, honey? Yeah. <laughs> 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 but even poor Rudolph's, like, even his mom, like, when his nose first glows, she just recoils in horror. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is a mean, mean story. And, and, and you know what? Yeah, that's what I, I feel like, I feel like Santa didn't need to be such a jerk in this no like he could have been oh what do you know a red no but like you know there <laughs> yeah. still could have been like a totally like yeah. like uninclusive society 
that was, oh my God, what are the neighbors going to think? Like, just that kind of thing. And then Santa, by the way, Santa's not conforming and he's not getting fat. That at the end of the thing, that could be his. Oh, I was, you know, I'm a mutant too. Not a mutant. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a misfit too. I'm, I'm, I'm a skinny Santa. Let's all let our freak flags fly. <laughs> you know, that's making me so sad. It is all because Santa had he just come out and be like, oh, a lovely red nose. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you I, don't see that every day. Exactly. It would have been a totally different. Uh, it would have been a totally different picture. And furthermore. Yeah. Donner and his mother are all like, oh, well, we can't have that. And you're like, they're your genes, mother. What? They're your genes. <laughs> yeah. You birthed them. Yeah. yeah. And, then the they put that, and then they put that mud on his nose to try to hide it. Yeah. yeah. It's horrible. It's not very comfortable. It's not very comfortable. <laughs> and you know what? I mean, look, he's been alive, what, 10 minutes? Yeah. And his dad's already bitching about his failed career. Yeah. And, yeah, and his mom's already recoiling from him. Yeah. yeah, and his well, dad's boss comes in and says, "Oh, this isn't good. You, you're, yeah. you can't be what part a of my." Freak. Although I do have to say, I do have to say, don't you see scenes of like Donner playing with his kid outside, like you know, like you know, n- nobody's looking. He's still he's not, he's not trying to introduce him to society or anything. But he like because he doesn't want society him. to see him. <laughs> no, he did. he's ashamed of him, and he's afraid of like you know <laughs> the pitchforks and the and the, and the <laughs> torches that are gonna come for him for his mutant son. But uh, I think he still loves him and, you know, would want to protect him and stuff. But he just, he handles it really badly. Yeah. As we all would in 1964. He's, yeah. He loves him, but he's he's a disappointment. Yeah. He is. Oh, he for is. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's all his, like, and, and, yeah. It's not, it's not like Rudolph is on meth. Right. Right. He just got you know? there. He's a fresh yeah. new life <laughs> yeah. with a nice attitude. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Already recognizes Santa. And he doesn't, and, lo- you know, he doesn't love him because of who he is. He be- loves him in spite of who he is. Oh, <laughs> right. oh That's God. true. This is awful. Yeah. Happy well, holidays. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> well, and, and then he has that line, right? He says, it's not very cubbable. And then he says, yeah. well, you know, we're going to we're gonna get you some self-respect. You know, so since when is self-respect <laughs> yeah. better than, you know, when is self-respect better than cubable? That's what I want. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We have to choose now? <laughs> yeah. Things so lean Although, up there. Although, I will say, Can't the fake both? nose seemed to work for him, at least in terms of, uh, you know, Clarice. Is that her name, Clarice? Yeah. Clarice. Clarice. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she, she was into him with the fake nose. <laughs> she thought he was cute. Yeah. He's so cute. Well, because but, but or But you know what? We all, we all know she was into him. You know, she loved him either way. Red nose, mm-hmm. fake yeah. nose, mud nose. That's true. It didn't matter. She was just into him. Because, you know, she sensed his sensitivity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I got to say, Rudolph has a... He, he keeps his chin up throughout. Yeah, he's awesome. He does. Yeah, he's... Yeah. I mean, he, he takes a lot of guff from... I mean, I, who Fireball, mm. which I got a few words for Fireball. The very first thing, Fireball, you're like, you realize, Fireball, you're the only one on this island with this golden orange shocks of hair. <laughs> and, you know, your name is yeah. Fireball, as if, yeah. you know, you, he, he's he's the only one there who's got orange flaming hair. And, and then his parents named him after his physical idiosyncrasy. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That now that's it's like a care bear. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually yeah. good parenting in a way, <laughs> yeah. right? But here's the irony: there is no movie about Fireball. That's is there? right. Nobody's ever heard of him. <laughs> no, he doesn't even make the team. Yeah, he doesn't even no. make the team. He should yeah. have been standing up banned. for his friend. They were banished. Pretty sure. Yeah, <laughs> they probably, probably were. They probably eaten. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> bummer. Don't. Then we get uh, <laughs> Don't Sam do the Snowman shows up again, <laughs> and he uh, he uses some kind of coded language, and even he seems a little uncomfortable. And he calls it Rudolph's uh, nonconformity. Nonconformity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And then we get we're introduced to the abominable snow monster of the north, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who is obviously a wampa. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm glad even Chris is on board. There. My question, yeah. my question on, on on that guy is, why did he hate the holidays? We know why Pete hates the holidays. We just don't know why the abominable hates the holiday. Because that's what Sam <laughs> Sam the Snowman tells us is he hated Christmas. What's the backstory there? Because yeah. everyone's trying to kill him. Yeah, it's like a chicken or the but egg. But that's every thing, day. Though. 
Yeah. Well, he, you <laughs> know, here's, communicates. here's what I don't get about this whole. Uh, first of all, he's the abominable snow monster. Because we already have a snowman. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? Okay. Yeah. So you're like, fine. We have to pull out everybody's got a different thing. Right? And he named fine. names, so he's abominable too. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's true, true. Yeah, true. But if, I mean, if he hates everything about Christmas, why does he live in Christmas Town? <laughs> well, it might be a, it yeah. might be a case of, of the Klaus family just kind of moved in and, and took over. Oh, like, yeah. He, he he's might indigenous. Have been, he's indigenous, yeah. Okay, <laughs> he's yeah. indigenous. Oh, this is all starting I, to make see, sense. See, I had it like, he's one of those guys who just, you know, some people uh, just have a life that's filled with angst. And yeah. if you clear things up, they just pile more angst on. And I yeah, thought yeah. about maybe he lived in Palm Beach or something, <laughs> but it wasn't enough. He had to yeah. move to Christmas Town and then tell everybody he hates everything about Christmas. But mm-hmm. you're saying I got it backwards. The the, the basically San the Klaus has moved in and yeah. then they named the place Christmas Town, probably knowing mm-hmm. that this guy hated everything. Yeah, about yeah. I mean, yeah. That was just a yeah. That was the thumb in the eye. Well, actually, <laughs> and then they enslaved this race of elves. Yeah. Yeah. Which was probably his food supply. Now he can't get to them. Are they indigenous as well? Or did Santa bring them there? You have to think they must be because they don't seem to mind the cold. No, they don't. No, they don't. That's true. And they're all... Uh, do we have a Django Fett situation? Because they all seem to be clones also. Except for the tall one. Except, Except for, for the, the tall, tall one. Except for the tall and, one. And what's, let's call him. He's a misfit, right? Yeah. He is. Why are you so tall? Well, you can't work yeah. in, the, in the toy shop. You're too tall. Yeah. Yeah. Got to make new tables for well, you. <coughs> yeah. Just for you. Well, we never see him working in the toy shop. Yeah. That's, oh, that's true. true. Isn't there a, and he tall, actually had a, a tall girl uh, elf as well? Just to... I don't no, think so. I'm just going to say now no. It's just him. And I think no. he was uh, put in especially as a spokesperson. I don't remember if it was for General Electric, but he was in ads for somebody. So ah. I think he was... Oh, I saw, I saw all those General Electric ads. The ones that tell you to, to buy a hair dryer and a cleaner, which is actually a... Um, a tank vacuum. Uh, there's an electric oh. uh, space saving electric can opener. Um, so the elves actually are also working for the man. Uh, and yep. they are selling and they're singing and they sound just like the elf choir. And they are singing, you know, she's going to love that hair dryer. She's going to love <laughs> that. Ele- or he is going to love that electric can opener. Um, and a toaster <laughs> oven. General electric toaster oven. Very convenient. <laughs> You know what I think is interesting about the elves, other than the fact that they're slaves, is you notice that they make all the toys, but they never get any credit from anybody? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Like, no kid wakes up on Christmas morning and he's like, elves. oh my God, thank you, elves. This is wonder. This is wonderful craftsmanship. Right. They don't get that. Well, it's weird. Yeah, they don't get the thanks, but you, I think all kids know that uh, the, the toys are made by elves, don't they? Like, that there's Santa's workshop and everything, that they're actually the hands-on guys doing it. That's what I always assumed. Well, yeah, but they made the Millennium Falcon <laughs> and the Death Star playset, and <laughs> Santa dropped it off. I, you know, I'm wondering, do the, do the elves live in single sex wings of Santa's castle? They're actually sexless. They just have like sort of some of them are kind of feminine They're looking, two models. others are masculine is that what it is? looking. But yeah, is it, it reminded me of sort of a like a cloistered vibe, like you know the <laughs> West Wing. They have the female elves and the East Wing. You know, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Could be. I don't know. A lot <laughs> like Catholic Church where they have, like, the, the convent and the rectory. And mm-hmm. then there, yeah. there's a whole lot between them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I noticed something here in the elf scene. For, first of all, I just want to say I have a brand new word for boring-ass humdrum also rans in my life. Oh. And it's <laughs> plain deer. Plain deer. <laughs> it's what <laughs> Santa says in his song. Yeah. He doesn't have yeah. any plain deers. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't right. have plain deers on his team. So one, th- one thing I did notice is like all of the other elves, other than Herbie, Hermie, um, Hermie, Hermie. Well, Jerry, hey, Hermie. hey, hang on. They call him <laughs> both. They do. They call him. They both. call him oh, Herbie really? and Hermie. Yeah. They don't even mm. care about his name. They do. They, they call him. I listened, and at one time he goes Herbie, mm-hmm. and he goes Herbie <laughs> doesn't want to make toys. And then they say you know? Herbie doesn't want. And, and then the it's later two. Hermie. Right, right. Yeah, it's sure. first. Mm-hmm. It's first Herbie, and then it's Hermie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, weird. And yeah. I think he becomes Hermie once he's cast out of <laughs> the toy shop. The Scarlet M. Yeah. 
<laughs> He's branded with him. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, I suppose he leaves on his own. He sort of, he sort he of escapes the prison. You can't yeah. fire me. I quit. Yeah. But what you know, what's yeah. interesting is you know all the other elves have these plain deer, nondescript mouths, but Hermes' <laughs> mouth is is bright red and it's quite mm-hmm. beautiful. <laughs> Quite kissable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm wondering, is that specifically because of his love of dentistry? Dentistry? <laughs> yes. Like, I mean, it's, it's his, <laughs> his love of oral hygiene and dentistry. And his mouth is way different and much yeah. more, uh, mm-hmm. you know, beautiful and sort of uh, riveting. <laughs> to look at <laughs> bewitching <laughs> bewitching <laughs> than the other elves beguiling, uh, be, be, beguiling. <laughs> enchanting <laughs> maybe, than all the other maybe, elves maybe all the other elves lost their teeth be, because of their poor dental hygiene well he could have oh, fixed that yeah, that's what hurt possible. a bit yeah. right he could have he could have <laughs> <helped us. laughs> I mean, but but um I, I i actually have the distinction i have the distinct feeling that um and this might be related jer that he looks different from all the other elves because he actually arrived at a different time i don't know how he arrived oh hmm. um i don't think He's those a saxville baggins <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm sure he is with that kissable mouth um yeah. and that's why he has uh <laughs> non-pointy ears and yeah. he has all the hair, and all the other, um, all the other, well, the other other male type elves have pointy ears, and um, mm-hmm. they don't have hair. So I think he's actually, or that beautiful mouth. So I, I think he's actually from from somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> maybe, maybe they kidnapped, like maybe Santa kidnapped him on one of his trips. Yeah, maybe he's just a kid. Yeah, Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, I'm yeah, you. yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or maybe because I thought he was named. I thought the name was maybe a reference to Hermes, the Greek god. I think that might be overthinking oh, it. Maybe. The god that transgresses boundaries. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> might be overthinking it right there. <laughs> That's a T-shirt. Just a picture of Pete. <laughs> so I think you might be overthinking it. <laughs> well, the 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 elf taskmaster says <clears throat> to Hermie Herbie, "Finish the job, or you're fired." And so I'm thinking. So right. what yeah. happens? What happens if if Herbie gets fired? Uh, you know, he gets to be a dentist, right? <laughs> right. He opens up yeah. shop with the money that he didn't. I, mean, I, I got fired. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I changed my name. I went from Jerry That's to right. Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. From Gary to Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. But what's he gonna do if, Jerry, if, we know if he gets fired? Like, how's he gonna survive? Like, his only sustenance comes from. Toiling in the in the toy workshop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, let's let's be clear. Sustenance is in quotes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, he gets yeah, gruel it's, it's, and a bunk bed. Subsistence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some right. Yeah. Some yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get. Uh, there, there's no spiritual sucker here in no, Santa's castle. Right. <laughs> no. No, there isn't. <laughs> the, the whole show yeah, is about we, pleasing I mean, the, others the, the, arbitrarily and being met with ungratefulness. Yeah. Yeah, and also just like training and and faking all the joy of christmas like everybody in this show yeah the true meaning of christmas is it doesn't you're probably a jerk and you're probably a grump but if you learn to go hee hee and ho ho and and sing and stuff then you know you'll trick people into thinking that that christmas is a magical time or something yeah even santa santa's like Especially the biggest santa. bastard of them all well he yeah, like uh, loves he them. orders he orders the elves to come out and sing for him and they, they're yeah. all they're all like trying their very best, and then he's like, "Oh, this sucks." I thought God, I, I thought, uh, I thought Mama doing. Mama Claus said, "Well, you know, you got to listen." And he's like, "Ah, oh, I don't want to listen." I thought she actually put him up to it. No. <laughs> Either way, he's being a bit no, of a that, jerk. That little yeah. scene yeah. there reminded me exactly of you, Tommy. Just, oh, oh yeah. I don't want to listen what? to this. Yeah, oh. elf singing it's in the middle of yeah. something, anything. <laughs> I'm doing laundry. There's need, that awesome part where the uh, it needs the head elf just uh, switches voices for a minute. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's crazy. You, you know what? I had the idea that he all together now. Cigar- too many cigarettes <laughs> for that elf. Well, there's a great line in the song they sing too. They sing. They say, "We work hard all day, but our work is play," and that sounds exactly like it's out of 1984. I mean that's yeah yeah, yeah, peace, yeah freedom is slavery yeah yep. yeah wow. apparently we're happy yeah well let, let's yeah. remember let's, it's for Santa yeah. 
let's th- think <laughs> about this for a quick minute. You're like, okay, so on this island, you know, everybody's grumpy and unhappy, and they're all putting on airs and pretending to be happy, and they're singing songs about how happy they are, but they have to practice the songs because they suck, and they can't deliver it, mm-hmm. and they're all phony. And yet yeah. we have mm-hmm. this little deer that is just <laughs> he's just born and he's just who he is. He doesn't have yeah. to fake yeah. anything. He doesn't have to put on airs. He's just he's just pure. He's just who he is. And 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 society is pummeling him. And they're yeah. all out there faking yeah. everything. I mean the only other guy who's actually true blue is the abominable snowman. Snow monster. Yeah. Snow monster. Well, what yeah. about Hermie? Hermie is yeah, what about Hermie? Yeah, Hermie That's is, but he's uh, well. He is still faking it. You gotta understand, he's still sitting at that table, and he's still he's still working on a a a a, a little wagon, and he's been doing oh, it for months. Yeah. I mean, he he sneaks off and reads dentistry, <laughs> the book. It's true. The book <laughs> dentistry. How weird he yeah. got that book? Is there a <laughs> castle library? But then he does finally quit. Yeah. No, he does. Yeah. He, he f- does. He yeah. finally yeah. quits and and tries to self actualize and everything. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Do you think he asked for that book for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> and then he had yeah, to make it himself. He had to Aww. make it himself. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think when he was kidnapped, like he, he had it with him because it was his dad's book. And that's the only thing oh, he's yeah. been able to hold on to of his past life. Oh, that is dark. Oh, that's beautiful. That's sad. <laughs> yeah. As opposed Happy to just holidays. stealing, it from, the, yeah, stealing yeah. it from the castle library. But there's no Amazon. You know, yeah. what's interesting is I thought about this. Before this Christmas special, 1964, people used to actually be named Rudolph. Uh, uh, I don't think sometimes. there's too many people named Rudolph these days. No. That you might find one or two Rudys here and there a little yeah. bit. There's like the yeah. dude in mm-hmm. Fat Albert. Yeah. His name was yeah. Rudy. Yeah, yeah it was Rudy. Yeah. But I, that's about, I don't know. There's like maybe two or three other Rudys, but... but there's nobody named Rudolph after this. Well, well, and mm-hmm. after that whole like Rudolph Hess thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that actually <laughs> crimping yeah. that name. Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty good 1939 name, though. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you get Donner and Blitzen German for thunder and lightning. Oh, is that what oh, that yeah. is? Yeah. Do we think? Okay, it's 1964. Okay, there's a scene, I, I might be skipping ahead, but there's a scene where Hermie and uh, and Rudolph meet. And it's a weird scene because like Hermie's hiding in a snowbank. Where is this your snowbank? Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, and they they kind of compare notes. Like, yeah, I'm I've got a glowing nose. Yeah, I want to be a dentist. And uh, they decide to be pals. And Rudolph's like, uh, you wouldn't mind that I've that I've got a glowing nose. And and Hermie's like, not if you don't mind that I'm that I want to be a dentist. And the way he says dentist, it sounds like it's in quotes. Uh-huh. And I'm wondering if in 1964, this was like coding for Hermie is obviously gay. What? He's a homosexual young man. What? And that is the truth. That, that's his, that, I'm being dead serious. I'm just laughing. And he's at like, that, that's reaction. the misfit ab- <laughs> aspect of his life. That's not and they gonna, can't quite go there in 1964. But they're, it's like an un- understood. It's like a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> That uh, we all get what's up with Hermie. Oh yeah, Hermie wants to be a dentist. Yeah, yeah. he's that oh, guy over yeah, there. He wants, he wants to, be a to work on beautiful mouths. You know, it's so yeah, you think, you're saying him? that he opens up the book. It says dentistry, but inside of there is like a playgirl, <laughs> exactly. and that's really yeah, what's centerfold. going on. Yeah, yeah. centerfold spills out. Centerfold spills. Wow. Yeah. Hey, listen, it. You know, I didn't. That the audience would understand ah, this. would be yeah. like, oh, yeah, he is different. Yeah. And it's not the dentist thing either. <laughs> it, it, that, that crossed my mind. I'm not going to, you know, it oh, did. It did it cro- yes. No, it crossed my mind. And, uh, you know, if you look at some of the color schemes in, in the movie, in, in the picture here, it's kind of interesting what they choose. Like the entire time they're on the island of misfit toys, it's in a very, very light feminine pink. Mm-hmm. You know, a very light feminine pink. And, you know, where, where other types of the movie is sort of a masculine blue. And mm-hmm. that that did cross my mind there, that, that you know, he wants to be, a, quote, a dentist, you know. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he wanted That's to poke things with his drill. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> oh, that's I don't think you have to be a dentist cavity. to do that, Jer. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, I'm I'm not I'm not saying Jer's right at all, but now I'm just noticing that the that Sam the Snowman isn't the only one without pants. I'm a little mm-hmm. concerned. All right, which other character does not have pants? Does anybody know? Well, the bubble. It's the lead elf. Um, it's the lead elf. The lead elf is oh, really? wearing oh. a jacket and a hat, and that is it. <laughs> Are you sure not like flesh-colored, Leggings? you know, leotard <laughs> yeah. or something? Yeah, I'm sure. You know what? See, okay. I think I think no pants is a sign of distinction. In yeah, a, yeah you're, you're a little more enlightened. You're like, yeah, I, why am I wearing pants? Who needs pants? pants. The world doesn't need yeah. pants. <laughs> it's a, well, get, get. You guys are all trapped by your pants. <laughs> okay. It's like, you know, ne- next year he's going to get promoted. He's going to get to lose the pants. <laughs> he just stays the course. Oh, well, man. I'm not looking. You know, you know, uh, you know, getting back to your, you know, Hermie wants to be a dentist thing. You know, Santa does say, he does actually say, now not about Hermie, but he does say a, a very difficult line to hear. Quote, Donner, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. a pity he had a nice takeoff, too. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And it's all, yeah. it all perfectly lines up to just that sensibility of like, yeah. Like we it seems like a normal guy, seems like a good person, but there's something off about them, and everybody should be ashamed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody should feel yeah, awful. Yeah, your son mm-hmm. is guy's genetically different. inferior. He's <laughs> not worth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's happy as a clam, but he's, yeah. he's not going to do it in our backyard. Yeah, this, yeah. I mean this, this yeah. whole little hamlet is filled with disgusting people and animals. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it's, yes. it's a culture of ostracism. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, you know homogeneity. Yeah, mm-hmm. except for Clarice, she's nice. Clarice uh, well, we, nice. there's another guy I think is pretty nice that shows up, and that's uh, Yukon Cornelius. Yeah, yeah. In a, he, uh, he's insane yeah, and he's annoying. Insane. But he's, yeah. Well, I was I was like kind of nice wondering guy. if he's a Quint figure because <laughs> <laughs> he he, show, he shows up and he's a, he's a, he's a gold prospector or gold and silver yeah. and peppermint prospector, but he's always yeah. on the hunt for the uh, the bumble as he calls it the the Bob yeah. Monster. monster. It's true. Of course, well, now, he wasn't. Uh, he sings his song about boat. using. Uh, what's that? He he wasn't. He nobody really knows why he's seeking the bumble. I mean, Quint uh-huh. had a pretty particular reason for for seeking his. Right, but <laughs> well, right. we don't know. But you know, yeah. But it, it's only fifty-one minute show. Yeah, and then he even talks about it, he, he's going to get his supplies, and he says his supplies are cornmeal, gunpowder, ham hocks, <laughs> and guitar strings. And then don't forget to cut on TV. <laughs> well, the guitar <laughs> strings is pure Quint using the piano wire to, to get oh, the shark. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But see, see now here's what's interesting. <laughs> I think Yukon, Cornelius, and Hermie could be magnificent business partners. Because check this out. It's 1964. Yukon, Cornelius is a silver prospector. And Herbie wants to be a dentist. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's like right. fillings yeah. galore. Yeah. It's like a fillings factory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And think about it. If yeah. Yukon mm-hmm. Cornelius switches back to gold, no problem. Hermie can just do caps and grills. There you go. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It, that's a perfect, I mean, that that's actually serendipitous, yeah. the way they meet like that. Yeah, he should start the. He should do the peppermint mine first and rot everybody's teeth. <laughs> there you go. Oh yeah, candy, and then yeah. they need all the fillings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So did you guys? Had you guys ever heard of this peppermint mine thing? I know it was only in 1964 and it was never shown again. Did you? Has anybody ever heard of that before? No. 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 What? So he was looking for a peppermint mine in 1964, and then as of 1965, it was they cut that scene entirely. Really? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Weird. Pete, you found that, right? Yeah. 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 There's a, there's another scene like that coming up that I think is fascinating, too. Well, they also cut out the uh, Fame and Fortune song, they which did. I clearly remember. My sister and I sing it all the time. Well, they didn't like cut when that they, out. Like when, when Hermie and, uh, and Rudolph get together mm. for the first time and they sing, you know, we're a couple of misfits. That used to be a song about Fame and Fortune, no. which my sister and I always sing, Mame and Torture. But, no, that can't... <laughs> what, no. <laughs> No, the what? Misfits came first, and then they they switched it out in '78 for Fame and Fortune. Oh wow! And that yeah. Oh yep. 
Really? And then they, um, but it's not there anymore. Though. Like I, I watched this on a DVD that exactly. I bought like you know, ten uh, years ago or something. Exactly. And so, it's got. It doesn't have fame and fortune. It has. Uh, that's right. So the ones whatever, that they, the misfits. ones they put out on DVD and VHS and uh, Blu-ray all have misfit, but the ones that are televised uh, up until 1978 yeah. were fame and fortune. No, up until from 78 to like 93, were fame and fortune. And then in 93, they, they had to take some more scenes out. Uh, CBS took some scenes out to um, put in more commercials. And then they used mm. the audio from Fame and Fortune. And they used the vid... No, they used the Misfits. The Misfits video and the Fame and Fortune audio. And it doesn't match up. Oh, weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. totally weird. <laughs> totally weird. So they so huh. who, so in 1993, people are like, "Oh, the heck with it. Let's use this audio and that video, and it'll all, and nobody will be the wiser." Well, actually, no. Everybody is the wiser. Well, to me, the big bombshell that they changed was when this originally ran. Um, you know, uh, Quint or uh, Yukon and and <laughs> the gang land on the island of Misfit Toys, and the Misfit Toys beg for help. Yeah. And then you, you never hear anything about them again. Like the Misfit Toys <laughs> well, just disappeared. Yeah. And they said, like kids wrote in outrage. They're like, they never went back to save the Misfit Toys. What happened? No, oh, on like, the they credits never did you do. In the old credits, they do the the. Uh, oh really? Yeah, the sl- the the sleigh goes overhead, and the elves are in the back, and they're throwing. I don't know why they chose to do this, but they're throwing the toys out. Oh yeah, of that's the back. They're, yeah, they're, they're they're euthanizing them. I think that was added later. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that's something that got cut out for it time for a while, for, and for a lot time. of kids saw it without that or something. So, the, so they actually well, they, put, well, think about it. They <laughs> they're they're dropping out the misfits before they get to the real toys because they give them umbrellas because everybody knows an yeah. umbrella yeah. doesn't work as a parachute. And in that bird, right. there's yeah. the bird that says, "I'm a bird that can't fly. I swim." Yeah. And the elf yeah. very specifically doesn't give him an umbrella and just chucks him overboard. <laughs> oh my god. I no, no, I'm literally just dead. and then yeah, when, after, after they I get rid of all that. the yeah. yeah, and after they get rid of all the misfits, the elf like mm-hmm. kind of taps Sand on the shoulder and he's like, "Okay, on to the toys. On with <laughs> yeah, the real yeah. toys." <laughs> you know what yeah. though? Honestly, that's probably the more humane thing to do because it's either that or they're just going to be in a landfill <laughs> in like a week. <laughs> oh. Like, "Oh, a Charlie in the box." <laughs> Thanks for you know, I, Christmas, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I don't know if you guys this. noticed. Wait, one last on that. I don't know if, guys, if you noticed. You know, there's a there's the train with the square with the caboose with the square wheels. When they throw uh-huh. that tr- when yeah. they throw that train out of Santa's sleigh, caboose is gone. Oh, oh I didn't no caboose! Oh, he upgraded. <laughs> well, no, it never even made it on the wow. sleigh. Yeah. Oh. Was, uh, well, yeah. No, they just they, they just like they, they amputated <laughs> his, yeah. his, his caboose. Mutant part. Yeah, Santa's like I'm. I'm not taking those square wheel square wheel caboose. Forget it. Well, see now we get we get. You know, first of all, Pete, as you mentioned, we have a bird that doesn't fly. He swims, and you're like, uh-huh. we have a name for that. It's a penguin. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this, this guy's <laughs> only problem is that he's lost. Like penguins aren't in the North Pole. He just uh-huh, says he just right. needs to be on the other pole. But then we have a cowboy. He rides an ostrich, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm sitting here going, that seems like a simple fix, you know. Uh, unless uh-huh. the cowboy and the ostrich are codependent, that's. <laughs> I think they might be sewn onto each other. Yeah. Actually, you're like that's that's not really a big problem. I mean, a cowboy that. Well, what about just Charlie separate. in the box? Just tell people your name's Jack. Yeah, just change your name. Well, but but see, here's yeah. the problem with that. That would be not being who you are. No, that's not oh. authentic. That's no, not authentic. I guess so. yeah. yeah. Well, and I didn't. I'll be. I'll be honest here. The water pistol that shoots jelly. That just mm-hmm. needs a new name. Just don't call yeah. yourself yeah. a water yeah. pistol, which I know. I know. I just went against my own rule. <laughs> you call it a jelly <laughs> pistol. Yeah. But just don't load it with jelly. Just load well, it with or water. Or if you have to load it with it's jelly, just generating just jelly. Introduce in there. yourself as a jelly pistol. Right. And and maybe mm-hmm. it's a awesome kind of jelly pistol. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, it sounds a little salacious. I know it does. Yeah, but yeah. It does. That's that. Speaking of salacious, I really wish, like Jerry, you and I have spent hours and hours and hours theorizing about what the misfit nature of the doll is, oh. and we can't repeat any of it on this show. I, I know. But if we is. did, it would be our highest-rated episode ever. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got gotcha. you. We got a polka dotted elephant. Check. 
Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie in the box. Yeah. You know, I got a seemingly normal doll. What's up? With yeah. <laughs> there's a, you know, there's a scooter. We'll find out the hard way. There's a scooter that wears a frown. But but Aww. see, I have a thing on this. I'm just thinking that all these toys, everyone on the island of Misfit Toys, just has seasonal affective disorder. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, because you can't blame the, them. I think no. they're all cool. The rest of the, you know, the other 11 months, they're fine. And uh-huh. then December rolls around, and then it's like, Mah! and the scooter gets a frown, and uh, the the doll gets her idiosyncrasies. And <laughs> <laughs> the elephant breaks out in hives. The elephant breaks out in <laughs> hives and nervous. Yeah. Well, That's I think, hilarious. I, think uh, I saw somewhere that, that um, one of them, Jules Bass, or someone was on uh, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, and, and did say that the doll had psychological, she was a psychological misfit. Oh, it's funny. Wow. Uh, well, there wow. is a line. She says, and we can say, how do you do? It's in the song of Island of Mist of Enjoys. Yeah. Like, so that, they uh-huh. bring out a doll, and she says, you know, supposedly maybe her, that's her that's her catchphrase is she says, how do you do? But she can't say it. Maybe she stutters. You know, the boat that doesn't float. The boat. Yeah, is, yeah. is a b- yeah. B- 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 boat that doesn't fl- yeah. fl- 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 float. And then it sinks. To say nothing of the stabber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> say nothing of the stammer. It's terrible. Oh my goodness. <laughs> every time I see uh, King Moonraiser, which is a stupid uh-huh. name, yeah, but every time that. I see him, I think I think that I dreamed it and that I am dreaming yes. it. Uh-huh. Like I always think, like was there was there like a totally messed up part with like a flying lion with a crown? <laughs> he doesn't fit the movie. No, like he, not at all. No, no it's animated weird. differently. Everything yeah. about it's weird. And yep. I mean, he's, it's like he's, a, it's like a Oz well, book that nobody ever read. Chronicles of Narnia, right? Yeah, it's Aslan. Yeah. 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 I don't understand. Yeah. And what's his misfit? Like, what's what's he weird? Is it because I, I, I'm a, you know, what, what is his thing? I'm a flying he's lion? He's not. Well, he's they not. get off the yeah. island. Like, well, well, no, he's like, <laughs> no, he's, it's his island. They, yeah, that's he's his castle. Nice. Those are his slaves. I don't know. Oh. See, that we're, we're setting. He's not. If you survive the winter, will <laughs> oh. you tell Santa about our toys? <laughs> <laughs> you can only spend one night, and then you're out. <laughs> And you know what? One bed per house. You know what's crazy? He kicks him off and he says that. And you know what's really weird about that? He's like, living beings cannot, you know, I don't know what he says. Can't can't live here. And you're like, we just saw a cowboy and an ostrich. I saw a fish or, you know, a bird that can swim. Like, what are you talking Mm -hmm. about living beings? Here, you're kicking out out a reindeer? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. I don't understand it. Like, how? Who's at like, least yeah. he's not a grouch. Yeah, we're all I know. puppets. We're all stop motion animation pick puppets. One. We're all, we're all, yeah, we're we're all living beings here, or we're not. Yeah. But if we're not all living beings, they don't have a a train talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> Off my island, you skin jobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So at this point, we get. Uh, we find out that Rudolph's dad and mom have finally kind of had a little bit of a change of heart, and they've gone looking for him, and they've been captured by the abominable snow monster. Oh, wait, can I say one thing really quick about that, though? Yeah. It's, it's 1964. There's always, like, you don't think of, like, this, you know, yes, there's, like, a civil rights movement, and there's a like, women's liberation and everything, but there's no, like, actual, like, I mean, there's always that scene of, like, the women took it upon themselves yeah. to do what the men could do, and yeah. it like, always yeah. leads to nothing. It's, like, kind of like lip service. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, it's like Brady Bunch, like Marsha can drive a car or, you know, whatever, oh, like, uh-huh. you know, anything, you know, a woman can get a job, you know, something like that. Some crazy like Mary Tyler Moore idea. wearing pants. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's, it's funny that that's, it's always surprises me that that's in there. The, oh, the women decided to go out and oh my, oh, it's pretty progressive. Look at that. I'm like, eh, not really. It's just kind of there in the background. <laughs> it's interesting saving. though that it's, it's right after. You know, daughter says, no, this is man's work. Right, right. There's, you know, there's a very strange thing here. What time of year does this whole damn thing pl- take place? Like August? Be- because if, we, if we, we need to walk this back a little bit, you're like, so when's Rudolph mm-hmm. born? You're like, Santa comes by. He mentions the whole sleigh thing. I think the sleigh. Th- I think the the team tryouts or whatever happen right after Christmas. It's very it's confusing. Think he's getting ready no, for the new because oh, okay. he said like when 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 Donner goes out to look for Rudolph, and then Clarice and the mom go out to look for Rudolph. It says after several months had passed. Like they like mm-hmm. after like Rudolph's mm-hmm. been missing for months, yeah. right? 
Yeah. Yeah. He's he's yeah. he's it's been getting, missing for yeah. months on his quest, and uh, this is like one of those uh, hero with a thousand faces Joseph Campbell things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm sure that's what they were yeah. going Here for. Here gets his big boy antlers. But but it is kind of <laughs> strange. You're like he gets his big boy antlers, mm-hmm. and does it take place over like a year and a half? No, I think the tryouts were I April, think it's a year. and then and then oh. they, and then he leaves, and then. Um, He's gone for months, and then we're almost up to Christmas again. Well, yeah, well, so, yeah, because mm-hmm. well, now we're yeah, two days Santa, before Christmas. Rudolph right. leaves for months, and then Santa comes in, and he returns December twenty third. And of course, Santa only cares about himself. You have like, <laughs> right, like yeah. Donner right. and the misses yeah. are, are and Clarice are, are are we we have missing deer everywhere, and not only that, we got one mm-hmm. of the deer yeah. that's you know is the main hoister of your sleigh, Santa. And, and right. uh-huh. you think he's finally turning a corner, like oh, there's there's, there's human casualties, there's you know human in quotes, yeah. but you know. But how's this weight? People are being what's affected and they're missing, and oh my god, uh, my bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's not in my in my team. Uh, I can't have Christmas. Have you have you been practicing these voices, Tom? Oh, he ha- he <laughs> has been for like twenty <laughs> years <laughs> since I was like ten. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. You know what I think's fascinating though is. When uh, Yukon Cornelius and Hermie come back to the to Christmas town, Sam the snowman, I, I always thought he was just the narrator, but then he says <laughs> right. he sends yeah. them off to find Rudolph. Yeah. yeah. And that but that's weird because he never sends Santa off to find Rudolph. Like he never says, Oh, I told Santa or oh I sent some other people. I don't people think for you help. can tell Santa anything. Yeah, I think that's yeah, how you wind up right. Santa probably, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Claus ought to be so careful Sam's tell just, them to eat. Jeez. Yeah. Well, that's why <laughs> Sam's always afraid and holding up the umbrella. He's always he's flinching from Santa hitting him. Yeah. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> he's holding up the umbrella. <laughs> you know, good. I one thing I didn't understand about Yukon Cornelius, just sort of as an arc, is if he's prospecting for silver and gold, does he realize that he's in a frozen ocean? <laughs> like the right. Arctic, the yeah. North Pole is is mm-hmm. just ice. For for now, yeah. <laughs> Unless he's mining for like fossilized like Christmas tree decorations mm-hmm. that are silver and gold. That's like, like all I, the natural I don't silver get and gold you find it, up there. He keeps doing all this silver and gold business, and I get it. Like Yukon, like the Yukon gold strike. But then you should probably migrate south. To mm-hmm. you, the Yukon yeah. territories yeah. or the Northwest territories or something like that. But if you're up in the Arctic looking for, and uh, you know, maybe uh, that's what I don't know. I don't know if that's his misfit or if he's just stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't. Yeah, it's not clear like what his actual misfit, whatever. Well, is he, do we know he's a misfit or is he just happened to be? He's, around? I yeah, he's I don't know. Like, like he's 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 standing there when there are a lot of conversations about misfits and help out the misfits. He's and a, he's a misfits. loner. He's a loner. He's I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of. He's on a, he's on a you know. quest that matters only to him. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what's interesting? Do you, I mean, when you talk about, he certainly knows a whole lot about Bumble culture. Like, he's yeah. the expert on, yeah. uh, he's, he seems like, as far as I know, the expert in the world on Bumbles. No one yeah. else knows mm-hmm. that they bounce, you know. Uh, that no one else knows that they're rendered useless without their choppers. Right. Mm-hmm. So. I think I could have guessed that. But well, they're, <laughs> yeah, still, they're still strong. You know what Pick I don't get is it, it, you bring up Quint, and I'm wondering is there some sort of bumble thing here, where like he he has a he has a very intimate relationship with the bumbles, just throughout his life. Like may, maybe he was uh-huh. raised by some, and they cast raised him out. Raised by bumbles? I don't <laughs> no, know. There's if something had, going he, on he, here. He, he knows that, a lot about them. He would have he would have known that they bounce. He, we wouldn't have had to find that out later. Well, see, yeah, maybe he was maybe he was on an icebreaker during World War II that went down. <laughs> it was atta- and then, like the survivors I in the water right. were attacked by bumbles. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> like they, they yeah. found ice and they tried to get on the ice. And, yeah. and they couldn't Those get on Black ice. eyes just roll around and around in a crazy, funny way. <laughs> <laughs> Very comical. I'll never prospect for silver and gold again. <laughs> Hair kind of pops up on top of his head when he's all surprised. <laughs> But we delivered. But we broke the ice. Yeah. <laughs> we delivered the teeth. We delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I came across Hermie Robinson. 
<laughs> Dentist from Cleveland. A dentist from Cleveland. Bobbing over down like a top. <laughs> Bumble and gummed him in half. <laughs> He'd been gummed in half but all the waste. <laughs> wasn't wearing any pants, it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Oh, so we're in the cave. I interrupted you at the cave, Pete. I'm sorry. With Hermie uh, and the uh, and Yukon at the cave. Oh no, I was just saying. Uh, yeah, so Hermie and Yukon show up at the cave just in time and rescue Rudolph, who had gone to rescue his family. Yeah, and they all show up back in Christmas Town, and uh, that's when we get the denouement of the story. Yeah. Before we actually, oh, can I say one really really bad joke? Yes. Uh, uh, Hermie squeals like a piggy. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that's terrible. That is terrible. That was terrible. You know, that you know terrible. what's interesting here is this entire time Yukon Cornelius is packing. He's got yeah. a six yeah. shooter. <laughs> yeah. You know what else he has, which is awesome that I never noticed? He has a pen. He has a pen in his pocket, <laughs> in his breast pocket, <laughs> with a little clip on it. You know what? I mean, I mean, well, one thing that's nice is he probably could shoot. The abominable snow monster of the north, but mm-hmm. but uh, you know, but he doesn't. He walks him back. See, I know he knows that he bounces, you know. And what they do is, it is disgusting that they remove his teeth. It's that disgusting. Is, that always kind of that always it's bothered cruel. me. It's horrible. Yeah, it's yeah. cruel. I mean, he's gonna die. Like that's his only means of <laughs> survival. Yeah, he could probably gum those elves. He could like swallow them whole. <laughs> well, Make but smoothies. the whole thing is like Elf if smoothies. you take out his teeth. I guess now he's... Is he a vegan? I don't know. I yeah. He's, he's going to be a lot thinner. He's doomed. Well, <laughs> yes. that'll suit Santa. I think he's doomed. And you know what's yeah. too bad? They didn't, like... Okay, so you imagine this. First they remove his teeth, right? Then then Yukon Cornelius pushes him back and pushes him back and pushes him back over the crevasse, mm-hmm. you know, and, and mm-hmm. down he goes. Uh-huh. And he bounces... And and getting towards the very end here, Yukon Cornelius says, "I've reformed this bumble." Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, "Okay, yeah. so did they talk at the bottom of the crevasse?" <laughs> yes, they were like bouncing back. <laughs> yeah, or they were like, "All right, yeah. listen." I think that's that's a euphemism. That's like I I reform these, you know. Yeah. Political prisoners. I don't want to go there, but that that's <laughs> yeah. that's definitely yes. a euphemism. <laughs> I taught this indigenous person to read yeah. and write like a good American. Well, after yeah. I took out all his teeth. After I took out all his teeth. <laughs> right. One of the, after one he of realized, the, well, I'm done. I mean, I'm you know what? It would have been, <laughs> in well, retrospect. I'll put a star on your tree, sure. In retrospect, <laughs> it would have been more humane to pull out the gun. Well, sure. Yeah, sure. yeah maybe. It yeah. would have, yeah. That might happen soon after Santa leaves. <laughs> there aren't as many witnesses. Santa's not going to care. That's true. No, Santa really no. couldn't care less. Santa's like, I don't know. He could be standing right no, there. Yeah, away we it. go. Yeah. It's Christmas yeah. Eve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mumble schmumble. By the way, does Santa it's... completely overstep his authority in, in canceling Christmas? Like, he's about to cancel Christmas because he can't do his part of the job? Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. is the Vatican going to call him up and be like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> words come through the wire that you're canceling Christmas? Uh, Could you not do that? It's supposed to be like a three to two vote or something. <laughs> you know what? Look, Sa- Santa is a horrible killjoy. This whole yeah. show, he's useless. Yeah. He is. Yeah. And, and he's useless. Well, he's evil. He's evil and useless. And at the very end, I mean, he has this, quote, you know, pardon the pun, bright idea to commodify Ooh. Rudolph. It was all his idea. Yeah. yeah. So, right. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah. yeah. And then and he by takes... the way, Oh, go ahead. Uh, th- th- something essential to the whole Rudolph story and to this, this show, like I've, I've never understood how Rudolph's nose could be used to cut through fog and like to, to, to act as like a, like a headlight. Uh-huh. Like a, like a like a running light or an anti collision light or something like that. Yes, <laughs> yes that's but like it's not going to like project. <laughs> the light doesn't go beyond his nose. You know, it's not like no, that's it's not going to help right. you see. All all you have, you have this always bothered is me. Follow the sort of orb halo of mm-hmm. red. <laughs> right. uh-huh. It looks cute on uh-huh. a card. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. Pretty much. Yeah. And you know you yeah. you got to be point. careful because you know in fog you're gonna it's gonna just reflect right back to you. You know that's just not useful at all. Yeah. Yeah. No. In case no. there are any other yeah, slaves I mean, I out mean, there. I, 
I'm sure what happens is Santa gets up in the air about 15 minutes, and he goes, oh, Rudolph, ho, 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 take us back down. You suck. <laughs> this isn't working out. <laughs> yeah. This isn't working yeah. out. Back to the mines. Yeah, yeah. back to the mines. <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> Honey, mama, we're having venison tonight. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Well, maybe that's Rudy, what happened to the uh, the other. Did, I mean, you guys have counted the the reindeer, right? So Ru- with Rudolph, we should have nine. There's actually only seven hooked up to the sleigh. What do you think happened? Oh, is that oh, true? Yeah. Does Donner fly? Does Donner fly oh, with them? He does not. No, he doesn't. Right? Like he gets he, he loses yeah. his spot. Well, wow. we're still missing one though. That's weird. Because we should, you know, with Rudolph, we should have eight, but we don't. Yeah. We only have seven, and nobody. Oh, it's seems seven to, with Rudolph. Nobody mentions it. Nobody calls yeah, it. Yeah, like, oh, maybe we don't have our full complement nope. of reindeer. Hmm. You know what? People disappear once yeah, in a while. Reindeer disappear so. in a while. It's better if you yeah. don't ask questions, well, I guess, so. I guess right. so. Yeah, I mean, it makes the island of misfit toys seem like a benevolent, like a lovely place to mm-hmm. live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. they right. also that, don't yeah. mention that whole it when the Santa dolls, nightmare when the, over when the, uh, <laughs> across the little sea when the when the yeah. dogs <laughs> fall off the icebergs. So the dogs fall off the iceberg because when Yukon, Yukon Cornelius and everybody is they're going away on their ice flow and stuff, and he's got his little dogs with him. The dogs show up later, uh-huh. but they actually probably drown for a little while there because they're missing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I was, th- I was, yeah, I was thinking that too. And then, uh, I, uh, I, you know, the, the bumble goes over the crevasse and stuff, and when you look over the crevasse, um, you can very clearly see the bottom of it, and then they all go over <laughs> yeah. it. And they don't see them anymore. So people do just disappear. Right. Yeah. Apparently. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Conveniently. And then they say, well, they bounce, this. but they don't because they would have seen them. <laughs> yeah. Because that's silly. There's, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a lot of bad things that happen here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. There's just a lot of bad things that happen. And, and uh, you know, this has just been an abomination since the start. <laughs> is this why is this like you, you there's so many this is one of like a thousand shows geared to kids or families or anybody with a message of you know you know look past people's like what they look like the surface like it's what's inside that counts you know everybody should be included it's our differences that make us stronger and like somehow that message has never been captured and you know moved on through society like we haven't gotten there yet as a people like people are still assholes to each other is it because of this is it because like everyone in this show is essentially a dick and they don't really learn anything from their from their rank experiences and then you know well maybe all deep down inside we're all santa oh maybe we're just worried about the bottom line mm. yeah yeah Our filthy hands yeah. His hands are filthy. You ever notice that? It's really gross and like grubby, dirty. Actually, they See, only in some a... of the scenes. I did notice that. That's <laughs> that's a really good point, Tom. And I think that that could be a perfect segue to our next holiday special that we're going to do, which is "You're Such a Loser, Charlie Brown." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> let's kick charlie brown in the head yeah, again let's let's punching bag charlie brown <laughs> yeah exactly it's christmas charlie brown what the f- you don't get <laughs> <laughs> that's not a nice way to talk to charlie brown but that's just it this whole thing and then and then uh who who is it it's uh and I, we all talk about this everybody's like well linus is kind of cool with him you're like no he's not linus isn't cool right. with charlie brown he tolerates him He's a little fair weather. Yeah, yeah. and he tolerates yeah. him. And he, yeah. and he always is just kind of hitting him with, like, just sort of the declarative bomb. He's just like, that's yeah. not what Christmas is about, Charlie Brown. Yeah. And you're like, look, I was just mulling. I was just ruminating. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's like Linus is like a scientist studying Charlie yeah. Brown. And he's sort of, like, observing him and, like, giving him, like, bouncing stuff off him to see how he reacts. <laughs> it's like, what's life like as a loser? <laughs> what let me, for breakfast, weirdo? let me test it empirically here where's charlie brown <laughs> that's just sad no oh, it is <laughs> it is all of the they're they're all i mean this is sad you know charlie brown's sad yeah i don't know yeah mm-hmm. I, i'm with you, Pete. The, holidays you got me. the holidays are sad yeah holidays we take it to it's a wonderful life yeah. Yeah. i've never seen that one i love that movie but there's hope because january is on the way folks that's true a new year Christmas yep. couldn't be farther away. 
<laughs> I will say this. I love Christmas. You guys yes, are nuts. I, I'll say this This Rudolph thing has one of my all-time favorite little scenes in all of television. And, Tommy, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It's the one scene where they're staying in the Island of Misfit <laughs> Toys, and they're in the little <laughs> tiny cottage, and it's uh, this grown-ass man, Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Hermie, who's whatever, <laughs> wants to be a dentist. He's, you know, figuring himself out, which is fine. <laughs> and then Rudolph, who just doesn't know which way is, is up or what to do about his nose. Should I muddy it up or not or let it glow? <laughs> and, 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 you know, they're all in the little cottage, and the bedroom, <laughs> it's like the, the bed is the size of the entire room. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like the yeah. It's and a house for a bed. It's a <laughs> house for a bed. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. And, and, and right outside, it's a fascinating, that little scene and, and where Hermie goes, it's settled. We leave in the morning. All settled. Yeah, and, yeah. and Rudolph, <laughs> Rudolph, it's kind of a tough scene because Rudolph's like, no, 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 it's all my fault. You know, I have horrible self-esteem. It's all me. And and Hermie goes, it's settled. We leave in the morning. <laughs> You're right. He's That's like, great, Rudolph. Good night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then when Rudolph leaves, he actually leaves the little cottage door open. He does. That, he that does. makes my anxiety just go off the charts. <laughs> <He does. laughs> I knew it would. (laughs) (laughs) He leaves the little cottage door open. And the most miraculous thing about that little cottage, my favorite shot in uh, in all of television, is if you look, there's these little flower beds, those windowsill flower beds (laughs) with, like, blossoming tulips. Yeah. (laughs) And they're in the North Pole. It's like the the, the coldest snap of all time. (laughs) And the tulips are perfectly planted and and are blooming. Mm -hmm. And then I thought to myself, what am I thinking? It's the island of misfits. Or a right. tulip. Who ever heard of a flower that <laughs> survived in the Arctic? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> tulip that blooms in winter. <laughs> I'm a scientific miracle, but nobody wants me. <laughs> I never realized that little cabin was on the island. Like those were that—that was the Airbnb on on the island. I had right. no idea. Yeah, yeah, it's the guest house. I just yeah. thought that they had yeah. needed a place to. Yeah. Sleep today but it is the guest house you're absolutely right and it is very sweet it is very sweet that there are little flowers and stuff but I, it's yeah. he's kind of a schmo to leave the door open i mean he could get eaten by a lion yeah well, it's very passive aggressive yeah. i think he was mad at Hermie for flat out not listening yeah. to a word he said it's all yeah. settled yeah, I think you might be right. And it's it's a little bit one of those things. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> it's one of those, it's all about me, it's all about me, it's all about me. Like, I'm the problem, yeah. I'm the problem, I'm the problem. You're like, yeah. just stop it. La, yeah, la, la. Stop it. Everybody has a trajectory here, yeah. okay, Rudolph? It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my name's in the title. I'm on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've saved Christmas once again, guys. Hey, it's, it's hey. all settled. <laughs> Good oink, for us. Oink, 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 oink. <laughs> oink, oink, oink. Oink, 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 oink. like a piggy. <laughs> yeah, hooray for Santa. Wait, real quick. What's your favorite song in the movie? Oh. Oh, I know what my least favorite song is. Oh, that, that works. There's always tomorrow. There's nothing more depressing. Yeah. There's so many songs really about that. how everything's going to be fine tomorrow. And tomorrow's almost here. Mm-hmm. And on the one hand, it sounds like that's kind of hopeful mm-hmm. and like, hey, that's a good positive attitude. Things are going to turn up. But it's uh-huh. also like, no, you're deluding yourself. <laughs> you're going to be on this path for the rest of existence. <laughs> Nothing's ever going to get better because n- tomorrow never comes. You know, I hate that. She sings that song to him and, and she's like, yeah, it's like, if you take it literally, it's like, maybe tomorrow your nose will be all better. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but we're never going to find out because it, it, that's not how time works. It's never going to be today. Here's a little mud. <laughs> yeah, have some yeah. mud. You know, I thought you were cute with the mud on your nose. That's funny because I had that listed as my favorite song. Oh, oh really? I, well, I did. <laughs> but but, but I, I agree with you. The message isn't there. And and so I'll just pick silver and gold because you've ruined that. <laughs> and and well, the interesting uh, that's the kind of a mixed segue message, too. I think Misfits. We're just a couple oh, yeah? of Misfits. Yeah, Misfits is my, yeah, that's it my is? favorite. That's your good. favorite? Yeah. I can't stand everything by Burl Ives. Because he's... <laughs> 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 and I can't stand oh, Clarice. And <laughs> 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 Does Yukon Cornelius sing anything? No, thank God. Oh, okay. oh his <laughs> would be <awful>. the best. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. 
I'm the monarch of the sea. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> to you fair Spanish lady. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention, there is that huge weird, there's like this moment that's super weird in that scene where, where Hermie and, uh, and Rudolph first meet. And like Hermie, <laughs> Hermie introduces the word independent. And, mm-hmm. and Rudolph uh, repeats, he's like, I'm independent. <clears throat> and as soon as he says it, two or three like baubles from the Christmas tree behind them fall and break. Yes, that's true. <laughs> and it's like a super weird, specific, deliberate thing that happens. Mm-hmm. And I never know what it's about, like what, what, is it, what its significance is. It's very weird. Uh, it Everybody weird. go back well, and watch. I, I it's think very that's strange. fascinating. I think it's his whole world shatters. When he realizes, <laughs> oh, yes, maybe. it's like the world yeah, he like knew this. shattered yeah. around him when he... He's on the other side. Yeah. After he's declared, yeah. yeah after he's declared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, you know, I, I Herm, Hermie that needs works. to have one of those moments, too. He sure oh, does. Oh, yeah, he will. But you know what Hermie <laughs> does? he's going to have that moment with Yukon. The look that he gives Yukon when Yukon's like, oh, and I'm going to be a peppermint miner. And he's like, you know, like, falls back comically, but then he looks at him like... Oh, that man. <laughs> oh, my Yukon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those bicuspids. <laughs> and Hermie doesn't really es- escape because the first thing he does when he gets back is he, he makes a dentistry appointment for the lead elf. I mean, come on. Show some yeah. self respect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless he's just going to rip out all the, the lead elf teeth. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Oh, he's going to go on a rampage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just yank out everybody's <laughs> teeth who yeah. wronged him. He's, li- <laughs> he's going to say, wow. yeah, you're rendered useless without your choppers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now how's the tenor section sound? Yeah, guess what doesn't bounce? <laughs> oh! <laughs> <Yikes. laughs> Hee hee and ho ho. Yeah. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! <laughs>